Hello, today we're going to discuss hydrographs and then the causes of flooding. We will look at this particularly within the GCSE AQA geography specification, but of course the ideas apply more widely. So first of all, what is a hydrograph? Essentially, this is a graph with time on the x-axis along the bottom here, showing a storm event, which is this rain, these rainfall bars, um, and then the resultant change in the river in terms of how much water is in it. This is the purple line. This is the discharge measured in Cumex. There is quite a bit of terminology to learn to help you access the hydrograph fully. I'll use some of it here, but I'm sure you can use your textbook to help you fill in any gaps or questions that you might have. Referring first to the blue bars, this is the rainfall or storm event. We imagine that it has rained heavily for perhaps four hours. You can see four bars here, and I could have had a more detailed scale along the bottom there. Then it stops raining, and what we do then is cast our eye across to the discharge, the purple line, and we see how the river has responded to that rainfall, that storm. The term peak rainfall, we can see here, is used to describe the moment when the rainfall is most heavy during that storm. Now moving across to the discharge line. This is made up of what's below the green line. First of all, the base flow, which is groundwater flow that varies very little, will not go up a huge amount as a result of this rainfall here because that's water that is running through the rocks. It might rise slowly but that, or a little bit, but that'll take hours or even days to happen. This other section though, above the blue line, is gonna be the runoff. That is water that has run straight off the surface, has quickly got into the river and has caused the discharge level to go up rapidly. So we see the river filling up following the storm. The river doesn't fill up immediately. It takes time for the rainwater to reach the river channel. The rain may have fallen onto a forest near the river, or it could have fallen into a supermarket car park. But either way, the water will reach the river eventually. Unless, of course, it doesn't get there uh, in the scenario of which it might have evaporated before it arrives. So the time delay between the peak rainfall and the peak discharge uh, is going to be called the lag time. Lag time will vary depending on the number of factors. This, as we'll discover in a moment, is the reason why some places will flood much more readily and others will, are very unlikely to flood. So a lag time that is short between peak rainfall and peak discharge would be what we call a flashy response of the river, creating flash floods, very quick floods after a storm. Or if we have a long lag time, then it means we have a slow or a delayed response of the river. The rising limb will rise slowly and the, and the, the peak discharge will be somewhere further over here and likely actually not get as high up. Uh, the river fills up slowly, unlikely to flood in that, in that case. So let's now consider runoff and infiltration. So the key, of course, to whether a flood is likely is how the water reaches the river channel. If it all runs off the surface, it will enter the river quickly, all arriving at the same time. The river won't be able to cope and will burst its banks, causing a flood. This links to the supermarket car park scenario, which I mentioned earlier. On the other hand, if the rain falls into the woods, in the forest, the trees might intercept that water and it might infiltrate into the soil. Ultimately, the water that falls here will take longer to reach the river. And importantly, we can also think about it in terms of it, the water arriving at different times. So some water arrives fast, having fell in the forest, and other water is delayed for days, weeks, or even months and, and longer. Uh, this means that there isn't that sudden increase, that sudden rising limb causing the river to fill up quickly, causing the flood. Right, so now we understand the ideas of a hydrograph, we can start to think about some of the causes of flooding. That ultimately will affect the shape of the river response of this purple line following the storm. And if the peak discharge gets high enough, a flood will happen. Anything above what I've drawn on here is the bank full level might cause a flood because there is, in this scenario, no capacity left in the river. This is the point at which the river channel is full. Anything above there becomes flood water that has to spread out either side of the river channel. Now we drill into physical causes of flooding which are found under here. I'll just put that there so that we don't forget what that is. So here we've got precipitation. So that's rainfall, of course. If it is torrential or prolonged rain, then we're going to get a flashy response. We're going to get a short lag time and we're going to get a flood. In terms of geology, if we have impermeable rocks, rocks that don't allow the water to get through them, then again, it's a flashy response. It's a short lag time and a flood. And then thirdly, relief, which is the shape of the land. If we have steep slopes either side of the river, then we're going to get again a flashy response because the water is going to run off the surface, find itself in the river very, very quickly with a short lag time and then a flood. Now we move across to some of the human causes. So urbanisation first. If we've got urban areas, the towns and cities, then we've got tarmac, we've got drains, we've got sewers. All those things, again, are going to lead to a flashy response. They're going to lead to a short lag time and the flood happening. Deforestation, well in this 
uh, under this one, we can think about trees slowing the water down um, through the drainage basin. If we have tree removal with deforestation, then we have that flashy response because the trees aren't there to slow the water. So we have a steep and fast rising limb. We have a short lag time and a flood. And agriculture, the last one there, particularly with relation to exposed soil, if we have um, exposed soil, then we're going to get a flashy response. Again, steep rising limb, short lag time and a flood. This is especially the case if we plough up and down the hill rather than round the contours, because up and down ploughing promotes lots more runoff. All of these ideas here, whether they be physical or human causes of flooding, are going, of course, to link up to here. It's the relationship between surface runoff and infiltration, which is the thing that's going to determine the shape of this response and is therefore going to determine whether or not a flood is likely to happen.